Welcome to Cosplayland! I am Alice and today I'm going to show you how I made my Kami cosplay. For this project I am going to be using elastic fabric and my own bodysuit pattern as well as some foam. I will leave a link in the description if you need any of these patterns. Ideally, you want a four-way stretch fabric like Lycra, but for my bodysuit I only had this two-way stretch fabric. It worked, but it doesn't make this cosplay the most comfortable. In any case, when you are placing your pattern on the fabric, make sure you follow the grain lines on the pattern. This will make sure you get the stretches side of your fabric around your waist and hips. This of course will vary with your fabric, but the stretches will always be on this grain. I place my front pattern on the fold of my fabric and I like using weights to keep the paper in place. For stretch fabric, I prefer to use my rotary cutter to cut the pieces. For me, it is easier and cleaner, but you can of course use scissors instead. Just don't forget to add seam allowances if you are using my pattern. Also, rotary cutters are really sharp, so make sure to keep your fingers away at all times or you will cut yourself. You don't want to be KO'd before you start the fight, right? I cut the rest of the pieces of the bodysuit and I was ready to start assembling it. If you have ever sewn a stretch fabric, you will know it is a bit temperamental and I am going to need a few tricks to fit it. Using your normal settings on your machine doesn't always work. But before the next fight, let me introduce you to this week's sponsors, which is Moko Queen. Um, thank you, Kitana. Moko Queen provides some of the best quality contact lenses for your cosplays that I have ever tried, and for my Kami cosplay, I will be using their Aquaman Blue contacts. I was so in love with these contacts when I tried them. How was awesome my day? If you live in the US, their contacts ship within four days so you will have them at your door by the end of the week. And if you live in Europe, don't worry because they ship there too. And you can always use the code ALICECOS to get a 10% off of any of their contacts. Thank you so much Moko Queen for sponsoring this video and now let's go back to sew our bodysuit. If you remember, our normal settings didn't work with our fabric. Let's try using a needle for a stretch fabric. Still nothing. Okay, you asked for it. Interfacing it is. I iron a thin strip of interfacing to the back of my bodysuit. This will help my machine to sew the piece, but unfortunately it will also get rid of the stretchiness of my fabric. I recommend you to use stay tape or freezing paper instead in order to avoid this problem. This time it worked. Don't forget to leave a space and zone at the top to attach your zipper. Right sides together, I sewed my front and back pieces at the sides and shoulders, but this time I will be using my special attack, the overlocker. This machine is especially designed for stretch fabrics and it gives you a very nice and strong finish. It also keeps your fabric stretchy, which is just what you need. I decided to attach an extra piece of stretch cotton at the crotch of my bodysuit, but this step is not really necessary. The collar is just a rectangle that I will be folding in half. And yes, you can iron a stretch fabric, it is just a little bit more difficult. If you can, use a piece of wood or a heavy book to press the fabric while it cools. And we are ready to attach the collar. You will notice the collar pieces do not fit the neck opening. You will need to slightly stretch your fabric so both pieces match. 
Start at the center and at the back and pin as needed. Don't forget to slightly stretch the pieces while you sew them. I inserted the invisible zipper next and in order to make it really invisible, I iron it open first. With the zipper facing inwards, I pinned one side to the back of my bodysuit. And I sewed it very close to the edge with an invisible zipper foot. I closed the zipper and marked all the important parts, where the zipper starts, the fall at the collar and where I stopped sewing. I am going to transfer all these marks to the other side of the bodysuit. And of course I'm going to be sewing this part as well. Perfect! Don't forget to iron your bodysuit at this stage to make sure your zipper and all the seams are flat. And tidy up any loose ends on the zipper with a hand stitch. Here comes the trickiest part. In order to keep the edges of your bodysuit from spilling more than they should, you need to add elastic band to all the edges. My overlocker has a gap to introduce the elastic while you sew it. This is the first time I tried it with this machine, but I was happy to experiment with it. While you are sewing, you need to keep the elastic in tension, pulling it slightly to stretch it. It should look more or less like this. You also have to sew the elastic at your leg openings and you want to pull it slightly more because there is more to keep in place. But don't worry if you overdo it, I definitely overdid it in some places but it still worked. Now for the final touch, you need to fold those edges inwards and top stitch them using an elastic stitch. Any zigzag stitch will work. And that's your bodysuit done. I know it doesn't look like much on the table, but Wern, I promise you, it is a killer. And now, let's move on to the gloves. For my gloves, I will be folding my fabric in half and tracing the pattern with an erasable pen. You do not want to cut this piece of fabric any smaller as that will only make sewing it more difficult. I will be pinning my fabric together before I go to my sewing machine. And I will only put the fabric in half so I can sew each glove individually. I sew around the edges paying special attention not to close any openings. I recommend you to use a short stitch. Take your time and follow the lines. Now I was able to cut the extra fabric around the glove. And don't forget in between the fingers. I made my thumb as a separate piece to make it look smoother around it. And then I closed the final edge. 
I added an elastic band to the top and finished the fingers by hand. And with this, only the accessories were missing. And I'm going to be using foam. It will be much easier to work with a smaller piece. I transfer my pattern using a normal ballpoint pen. And I am going to be using a new blade to cut my foam. Try to keep your blade in the foam to get a smooth cut. Straight parts are best with a metal ruler. And I also like cutting the corners at an angle so they match better. These are all the pieces ready, but they look a little bit flat. I use a heat gun to smooth any loose edges and also to slightly shape the pieces. I could be using my Dremel, but I really don't like it. It's noisy, it's dusty and not my thing. And this is how it looks. It may not be perfect, but it does make a difference. I am going to be covering it with fabric so it doesn't really matter but it will even work for some painting. While my foam is still hot, I'm also going to put it around my arm to slightly shape it. Foam gets cold very quickly but do be careful and don't burn yourself. If you want an even smoother finish, you can use your scissors to go around the edges of your pieces. You can then heat them and round the edges. This is particularly useful for the smaller pieces. Finally, if you want to shape something round, it's best to use something like half a sphere or your knee. I covered each piece with my trusted method of stretch fabric and double-sided tape. I have a full video where I show you how to do it. For the gaps, I use an exacto knife to cut slits. The smaller pieces were a bit tricky, so I decided to use thread to make sure that fabric wasn't moving. And finally I put the pieces together using fabric adhesive. A few extra details and some elastic bands and my gauntlets were ready. Finally, for the hat, I decided to buy a beret. Make sure it is a military one, not the French style. I totally got it wrong the first time. The military ones are slightly different and they are shaped so you can just wear them on the side. I also made some pins using string plastic, but unfortunately I did not record it. I will try to put a reel on TikTok so you can see the process. And my cosplay was done.
Can I do the sidewalk now? Like Okay, fun. <laughs> 